Good day, friends. Welcome to Bible Class Topics. Today, we want to give another topical lesson. This time, keep yourself pure. We took this quote from 1 Timothy 5, 21 and 22. Paul the Apostle, writing to the young preacher Timothy, says this, In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus and of the elect angels, I charge you to keep these rules without prejudging, doing nothing from partiality. Do not be hasty in the laying on of hands, nor partake in the sins of others. In other words, Timothy, keep yourself pure. Let's define a couple of words. They're Bible words, so let's look up their Bible definition in Vine's Expository Dictionary of the New Testament Words. When I turn in Vine's, I find out that there's a list of 11 different Greek words that have been translated keep in the English language Bibles. Our word comes from T-E-R-E-O, which means to watch, to preserve, or to hold in reserve. Paul told Timothy, keep yourself pure. He's telling him to watch, to preserve his purity, to hold it in reserve. And of course, pure, we looked that up as well. In our text, it's translated from the same root as holy, the same root word, which is H-A-G-N-O. Well, this is our word, hagnos, but it's translated from hag hagnos. And it means free from defilement, and it means not contaminated. So, Paul tells Timothy, keep yourself pure. Keep yourself pure free from defilement. Watch out. Be careful. Preserve your purity. Don't let it become contaminated. And of course, we know Paul considers Timothy his son in the faith, and he shows his concern for him here in the end of his first letter that he wrote to Timothy. In the lesson today, we want to talk about keeping ourselves pure. We want to talk about things to avoid, things that keep us pure, and how to keep pure. And of course, there will be some overlap between these topics, but we'll try to stay as close to them as we can as we go through our discussion. Let's start with things to avoid. Number one, false matters. Exodus 20.16 says, You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Proverbs 11.1 1 says, A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Later on in Proverbs, the wise man says this in 23.6-8, through 8, Do not eat the bread of a man who is stingy. Do not desire his delicacies, for he is like one who is inwardly calculating. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. You will vomit up the morsels that you've eaten and waste your pleasant words. As Christians, we need to avoid false matters. We can't lie, bear a false witness. We can't do that. We can't cheat, bring a false balance or a false scale to weigh out what we owe somebody. So we can't cheat, we can't bear false witness, and we can't be stingy because the proverb writer says that kind of guy is inwardly calculating what's in it for me. We might as well say we can't be narcissistic. So first we're going to avoid false matters. No lying, no cheating, no bearing false witness. We also have to avoid presumptuous sins. Listen to Psalm 19.13, then we'll talk about the phrase presumptuous sins. Keep back your servant also from 
presumptuous sins, the psalmist is praying. Let them not have dominion over me, then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. The phrase presumptuous sins is found only once in the King James Version of the Bible. Most of the older translations stick to the word presumptuous, and even I read today from the ESV, and it kept that word. Some of the newer translations instead use deliberate. Keep your servant from deliberate sins. Others say willful, arrogant, insolent, flagrant. Similar words to these. So, we, if we want to remain pure, must avoid flagrant sins. These kind of sins that we know we're going to commit them, and we're going to commit them regardless. Deliberate sins, willful sins. The Hebrew writer said in chapter 10, 26 and 27, For if we go on sinning deliberately, after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Once again, Bible verses that tell us that once saved, always saved is not a true doctrine to be followed. The psalmist was a believer in God. He wanted to be kept from presumptuous sins. The Hebrew writer was writing to Hebrew Christians, and he said, we can't go on sinning deliberately. We can't commit presumptuous sins. These must be avoided if we're to remain pure. We also have to avoid worldly spots. Worldly spots. Listen to James 1.27. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Unspotted from the world. We have to be careful because the world is run by Satan. He is the one that tempts us toward fleshly things, towards worldly things. James, the Lord's brother, said we need to keep ourselves unspotted from the world. Later on in that same letter, chapter 4, verse 4, You adulterous people, he says, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. But wait a minute, you say. Wait a minute, brother. I'm the only Christian at my work. I'm the only Christian in my class at school. I'm the only Christian in my neighborhood. How can I avoid the world? Do you want me to go up on a mountain and become a hermit? Listen to what John says in 1 John 2, chapter, uh, verses 15 through 17. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the of the eyes and the pride of life is not from the Father but from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. Do not love the things of the world. Yes, we live in the world, but we are not of the world. We'll have more to say about that in a few moments. Let's talk about three things that keep us pure. Number one, keeping our bodies as living sacrifices to God. Paul wrote this to the Romans in chapter 12, verse 1. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, 
to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. He told the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, But I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others I myself should be disqualified. We need to keep our bodies as living sacrifices. We need to stay as healthy as we possibly can. We need to avoid those things that tear our bodies down. And we need to do the things that build our bodies up so that we can do God's will and do God's work. We need to discipline our bodies and keep it under control. We need to keep the unity of the Spirit. Listen to Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. We've read this verse, these verses many times here on the channel. There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are abomination to him, haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that make haste to run to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies, and one who sows discord among brothers. Now, of course, now in this point, we want to focus in on that idea of it's wrong to sow discord among brothers. But we could have just as well read this passage when we were talking about the false matters in our first point. Keeping the unity of the Spirit. This is a phrase that comes from Ephesians 4, 1 through 3. Paul says, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. If we're about the Father's business, if we're doing the work of Jesus Christ, that's going to keep us from getting ourselves in trouble because we won't have time to get in trouble. We won't have time to become unpure because we're out there doing pure, godly business. We're staying close to our brothers and sisters in Christ, and we're keeping the unity of the Spirit. Another thing that will keep us pure, and this should be obvious, is keeping in God's love. The word keeping can also be thought of as remaining, remaining in God's love. Jude, the Lord's brother, wrote a very short letter. It only has one chapter. Verse 21 says, Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And then Paul told the Philippians in chapter 4, verse 8 of that letter, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And when Paul says think about these things, he doesn't mean just sit there and think about these things. He means to get out there and, and do what's true, do what's honorable, do what is just, do what is pure, do what is lovely, do what is commendable. These are excellent things, and these are worthy of praise, and these are things that will keep us pure. Let's talk about how to keep pure, and we've already discussed this in the lesson, but let's add on. First of all, let's keep proper associations. I alluded to this uh, in, a, in an earlier point, but 1 Corinthians 15.33, Paul says, Be not deceived, bad company ruins good morals. Other versions say evil companionships corrupt good manners. Bad company ruins good, good morals. 
But we, we've already discussed the fact that we live in the world, but we can't be of the world. We've discussed the fact that we may have to go out and work among people who are not Christians. We may have to go to school with them. We may have to live in, a, in the neighborhood with them. Listen to what Paul says later in first, or earlier in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 9 through 13. I wrote to you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral, sexually immoral people, not at all meaning the sexually immoral of this world or the greedy and the swindlers or the idolaters, since then you would need to go out of the world. But now I'm writing you to not associate with anyone who bears the name of brother if he's guilty of sexual immorality or greed or an idolater or a reviler, a drunkard or a swindler, not even to eat with such a one as that. For what have I to do with judging outsiders? It's not those, is it not those inside the church whom you are to judge? God judges those outside. Purge the evil person from among you. So, how do we keep pure? By keeping proper associations, doing the best we can as we walk about the evil world, and avoiding anyone who claims to be a Christian, but is going to be dragging us down into his evil. We have to judge the people in the church to determine whether they are good or evil. Outside the church, Paul says God judges those. Do you remember Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived? He fell away in the end of his life. Why? Because he kept marrying woman after woman after woman. And these women were not of the Jewish faith. They were foreign women. And they brought their foreign gods to Jerusalem. And he began to allow them to worship their gods. And he began to participate with them. And that's the last we hear of Solomon. He did not keep proper associations. We have to keep our heart pure. Our heart. When we say keep our heart pure, we mean keep our mind pure. Proverbs 4.23, keep your heart with all vigilance for from it flows the springs of life. In Matthew 5, 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Later, Paul, I'm sorry, Jesus has to get on to some people. In chapter 12, verses 34 through 37, he says, You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you're evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. The last point we want to make concerning how to keep pure is keeping God's commandments. In John 14, 23 and 24, Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. John later wrote his letters, 1 John 5, 18 through 21, we know that everyone who has been born of God does not keep on sinning, but he who is born of God protects him, and the evil one does not touch him. We know that we are from God, and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one, as we mentioned earlier. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true. In his Son, Jesus Christ, he is the true God in eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. The purity of our body and soul, then, 
is directed by our mind, what the Bible sometimes says or calls our heart. And our mind is made up of three components, our intellect, what we know, our emotions, how we feel, and our will, what we are determined to do. Paul wrote this to the other young preacher, Titus, in chapter 2, verses 11 through 14, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope. The appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, who are zealous for good works. How do we stack up to these lists of items that we've made today? Things that keep us pure how to keep ourselves pure, things to avoid. Are we pure? If not, only the blood of Christ can cleanse our souls and let us set about doing his business as his people, following closely in his footsteps. I need to put some thank yous out there today because this PowerPoint template that I've used is courtesy of Slides Go. It's absolutely free to download from their website and thank you to them for providing this template. Also the splashing water photo that we have used today is absolutely free to use. It's from Matt Bango over at StockSnap and the waterfall and trees and clear pure water photograph is from Rifki Ramadan over on Pexels, also a stock photo that is free for your use. Many of these photos that we find out there on Stock Snap, Pexels, and other um, websites are free to use, and all they ask is that you just give credit where credit is due. So we're taking a moment today and throwing some Thank yous out to Matt, Rifke, and the people at Slides Go. Thanks for watching today. I hope that this lesson, as I always hope and pray, will be helpful to you. It, they're helpful to me to get my mind focused on where it needs to be focused. I appreciate you stopping by and watching, studying with me. You know that if you ever want one of these outlines, all you have to do is email, him, email me at BibleClassTopics at gmail.com. Tell me which lesson, and I will send you a PDF outline of that lesson. Your support, as always, is greatly appreciated. We're looking forward to studying with you again very, very soon here on the channel. Until then, may God bless.